We're making our own jardinera. How? We're gonna take all of this and ferment it into this. It's a really nice little condiment to have. Plus I need it for another great sandwich, which I'm really excited to make next week. First things first, let's talk about the vessel. I got one of these jars with a tight seal, which are not really perfect for the job. And the reason for that is due to the fermentation, there's gonna be a lot of gases released. So ideally you want one of those fermentation jars that have one of those little spouts on the top that are gonna release the gas one way. If you're gonna make this jardinera and you're gonna use one of these jars or uh, let's see, one of these twist tops, do it at your own risk. You're gonna wanna burp this thing at least a couple of times a day because it's gonna be really active especially if it's warm like it is here right now. Otherwise, you're just creating a jardinera bomb. That pressure needs to escape, and I'm gonna be releasing it a couple times a day, and I'm gonna be filming the second one. So you're gonna be seeing what's happening day to day. It's Monday now, I'm thinking latest by the weekend, this thing should be done. But again, it's pretty warm right now, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's done fermenting by Wednesday, Thursday even. All right, but enough talking, let's start with the liquid. I got half a liter of cold water here that I'm gonna start with, and I basically wanna fill up this jar halfway. One more. And I think that's actually pretty good, which is gonna make our job real easy, calculating the salt. We're looking for 3.5% salinity, which is easy, 35 grams out of 1,000. So I'm just gonna measure these out. There we go, 35 grams. Now I'm gonna close this and give it a good shake so that the salt dissolves. Now we're gonna throw in some dried spices. I'm gonna start with a few bay leaves. Those are not only gonna flavor the jardinara, but I also heard that they're gonna provide some tannins, which are gonna keep the veggies nice and crunchy. Then I'm gonna add some black peppercorns, mustard seeds, and a few pinches of dried oregano. I'm gonna give all of this a good stir. And we're ready for the vegetables. What I have here is a head of cauliflower, I'm not gonna use all of it, some sweet and spicy peppers, some green beans, a few carrots, a few stalks of celery. I picked out the ones from the center because they're nice and tender and I also wanna use the leaves. All right, let's start with the cauliflower. And as I said, I'm not gonna use all of it, but I'm gonna start cutting off some of these florets and I'll see how it goes. I'm trying to cut as many of these little individual florets so that it doesn't fall apart in the jardinara and turn into some cauliflower rice. You can just grab it by the stem and go around and that will release most of the florets. And then this thing you can cut into smaller bits. Okay, I think that's plenty of cauliflower. Let's throw that into the jar. All right, that's the cauliflower done. We can do the peppies next. Now, I'm going for two of these chilies. They're not very hot, but if you're not a fan yourself, you can just go with the sweet peppers. I'm gonna slice these whole with the seeds. These ones, I'm gonna seed. I'm gonna wanna remove that pith as well and slice them into sort of a, an inch slices. All right, all the peppies are going in. Next up, green beans. I've already prepped these. I've cut off the butts and the tips. So I'm just gonna give them the same treatment as the peppers. You know what? I might as well slice the carrots as well. The butts come off. I don't need these. Hmm, you know what? I think I'm gonna slice them into halves as well. I feel like a whole coin of carrot might be a little bit too big and it's not gonna eat very well. Carrots and the beans join the party. Now let's get our alliums. I'm gonna use a few cloves of garlic and a couple of these pearl onions that I had lying around, but you can adjust that just like anything else up to your liking. So I'm just gonna smash these, peel them, and I think I'm just gonna give them a rough chop. Now these guys, I'm just gonna peel I guess these are not pearl onions, they're probably shallots, but whatever they are, I'm just gonna cut them into quarters and then throw them in with the rest. 
and the last of the veggies is the celery and I want to use the leaves as well they're gonna give it nice herbal freshness these thicker stems I'm gonna cut in half and then just dice like the rest all right that's all I feel like I'm gonna have to press these down in order to fit everything but I think I'll manage perfect let's see if I can mix this up a little bit all right now normally with fermentation you want to put a fermentation weight something that's going to keep all the ingredients submerged but in this case i don't think i need it the only thing that i'm a little concerned about is that there's not a lot of headroom for the fermentation but as i said i'm going to be burping it a couple of times a day so we'll see how it goes for now i'm just going to close it let it do its thing and i'll see you tomorrow it's the next day, Tuesday, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon and I'm gonna burp this thing for the second time today. I did already once this morning when I got up around 6 o'clock and it gave me a little hiss so I'm actually really excited to see how it's going now. I don't know if you can see but there's definitely already life in there. So uh, yeah, let's burp this. I'm actually gonna go lower so we can catch it on the mic. Yeah, it definitely smells like something's going on already. You can definitely see some bubbles going on. All right, so I'm gonna close this. I'll let it do its thing and we'll check up on it tomorrow. It's Wednesday, day three. I don't know if you can see this, but there's so many bubbles coming out. Now, when I burped it this morning, it barely made a sound, but that's normal. Whenever you start a new fermentation, the same with a sourdough starter, the first couple of days are going to be pretty active and then you're going to hit a dip. But don't let that discourage you, it's going to come back even stronger. Alright, let's give our jardinera a little burp and see how it's doing. Ooh. Look at that. It's absolutely crazy. It's actually super active, I wouldn't have guessed that based on this morning. Ah, it smells so good. It's already getting that fermenty smell. I'm just gonna give it a little stir so that we turn everything over. Then I'm just gonna close it back up and let it do its thing. See you tomorrow. It's Thursday afternoon, day four, and it's raining a little bit, but it's also time for afternoon burp. It's been pretty warm, up in the high 20s slash high 70s. And based on what I've seen yesterday and this morning, I think we might be ready. All right, let's burp this. It looks super active. I mean, look at this. Not as much as yesterday, not as much as yesterday, but that's how it is with fermentations. It's ups and downs. I think I'm gonna go the whole seven days and there's probably gonna be just more of this. So unless there's something unexpected, I'm just gonna see you on Sunday. It's Sunday and for the last few days since we've seen each other, the jardinara has been steadily fermenting and I'm happy to report that it's ready and it's absolutely perfect. Let's open it and give it a taste. It's got that salty fermenty brininess. The vegetables have lost that raw firmness, but they're still nice and crunchy. It's absolutely delightful. Now at this point you can transfer this in the fridge and enjoy it as is, but for what I need it, I'm gonna transfer a few spoonfuls into that glass bowl and top it up with some olive oil. And what I need it for is this sandwich. Whoa, 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 that's not how it works though. You're gonna have to wait until next week to see this. And in the meantime, go make yourself a jar of this stuff. Roll out. <laughs>